The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Family Theater, starring Bing Crosby and Irene Dunn, with Dana Andrews as your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Good evening. This is Dana Andrews. A few seconds ago, you heard me say, more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. <laughs> I bet when you heard that, some of you said, what a strange way to begin a radio program. What are those people in Hollywood thinking about anyway? Well, I'll tell you what we're thinking about. We're thinking about our families, just like you're thinking about your family. You see, a lot of us in the entertainment business, well, we think the same way you do. We think that a happy family is the greatest gift a guy can have. And that's why this program is called The Family Theater. And each week, we remind you that more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Because we want to remind you that prayer, that's right, prayer, family prayer, can help keep your family happy and well and together. That's all. Simple, isn't it? Now, we're not here to preach to you. We're here to put on a radio program, and we hope you'll enjoy it. Tonight's story is by a well-known writer... Charles Taswell, the story's kind of strange and unusual. A story that might never happen on Earth, or even in Heaven. But then again, well, why don't you listen to it? Listen to the music of Meredith Wilson's orchestra, and to the story of J. Smith and wife. Starring Irene Dunn and Bing Crosby. Speak I to them in parables, because seeing they see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Gee, it's awful pretty, isn't it, Johnny? Yeah, it's all right. It looks something like the gardens in Central Park. Only different somehow. Yeah, it does, Mary. I wonder how you'd get in there. Well, I guess there must be a gate somewhere. People got to get in and out. Sure they do. They couldn't go climbing over the fence, could they? <laughs> I guess not. They look pretty funny. There's got to be a gate. You suppose they'd let us go in there? Why not? Gee, that'd be swell, wouldn't it? Well, I guess it would. You could walk around and look at the flowers. You always kind of liked him. Yeah. Remember the time that friend of yours took us out to Long Island? Charlie Brown? Yeah, that was him. We rode in the rumble seat and we brought back all those flowers. Dogwood, they said it was. We had a good time, didn't we? Yeah, we had them around the apartment for more than a week. I never saw flowers last so long. Well, you kept them till they were all dried up. Well, I just kind of hated to throw them away. While they was around, I could sort of look at them and remember what a swell time we had. Sure, you could. The geraniums and things I raised on the fire escape are pretty, but somehow they weren't like the ones we got out on the island. You could close your eyes and smell them and think you was right out in the woods. Well, I guess that was because they grew kind of wild-like. Those flowers inside the fence are something like them. We could get inside. I don't suppose they'd let you pick any, but you could look at them. Well, that'd be just as good. There's got to be a gate. Well, let's walk and uh, follow the fence until we come to one. Come on. Say, ain't that a gate over there? Yeah, looks mm. like it. It's all gilt or gold. What'd it be gold? They wouldn't have no call to use nothing else. Oh, it's so bright it sort of hurts your eyes, doesn't it? It's bright and shiny like my wedding ring when I first wore it. I wish I only had a chance to get you a good ring, Mary. I've been planning to for a long time. I know, Johnny, but don't you think about it. 
I was always happy and sort of proud wearing that ring. Oh, but that was a cheap one, only gold-plated. I'd have liked to get you a swell one, you know, solid. But that one was just as good, and it meant the same thing. I, I wouldn't have wanted a better one. It'd just been ruined with my hands in dishwater. It's been a waste of money. Just the same, I'd have liked to have got you a better one. I didn't have the money at the time, and then later on it seemed like something always come along to take the money, gas bills and... Rent and shoes for Tommy and... Oh, now, don't you worry none about that ring, Johnny. I was crazy about it. I wouldn't have traded that for one with 50 diamonds in it that somebody else would give me. Say, ain't that a guy sitting over there by the gate? Uh, you, you suppose he's a kind of a guard? Well, they'd have to have somebody to kind of take care of things. Do you think you might ask him if we could go in and just kind of look around? Well, no harm in asking. Lots of guys used to stop me on the street and ask me how to get places. You know, strangers in New York for the first time. Well, they could tell you it was a New Yorker and knew your way around. I guess that was it. I could always tell them, too, and how they'd get there easiest, on a bus or subway. Mm -hmm. I always thought you ought to have that job in the information booth down at Grand Central. I bet you'd have been swell there. Maybe I would. Remember how we used to meet there and go to lunch before we got married? Yeah. You, you used to always get there first? Yeah. When I came down the steps, I could see you standing there reading the timetable. <laughs> like he was a big businessman going out to Chicago or Toledo or Detroit. I bet you I read every timetable they had. The guy back at the desk must have thought I was a world traveler or something. He used to say, hello, where are you going today? Mm -hmm. You remember the trips we used to plan out of those timetables? While we was eating lunch at that one arm place? Mm, for our honeymoon, we was going to Washington, D.C. Yeah, we decided on Washington instead of Niagara Falls. It didn't cost so much. A and, and it was more educational, too. I'm sorry we didn't get to go. Oh, I'm not, Johnny. No, it, it's better like it was. Yeah, you get so dirty traveling and... Well, we, we might have got sick or something eating in hotels and a change of drinking water. Just the same. I wish we could have gone, but... Well, the furniture cost more than I thought it would, and then the first month's rent on the apartment in advance. And... It costs a lot to set up housekeeping. <laughs> Gee, wasn't we broke when we moved in? I'll well, say we were. The place looks swell. Of course, the elevator went right by the windows. Oh, but I didn't mind that. Why, it was sort of company when I was there alone in the daytime. Well, it wasn't so much, I guess. But, but it was home. Oh, when I brought some of the girls up from the store, they were jealous as could be, and... I showed them that picture of you. You know, the one you had taken out of Coney Island in the airplane. <laughs> oh, they all thought you were so handsome. They did? Sure they did. But well, Maisie Greenbaum said you was handsome enough to be in moving pictures. Uh, <laughs> well, I always try to keep dressed up a little. That kind of makes a guy better looking than he really is, you know. Guess I must have been wearing that coat with the bell around it when they took that picture. I always meant to have Maisie come up for dinner some night. That would have been nice. Now, why didn't you? Oh, I don't know. We just sort of lost track of each other. Maybe she got married and gave up her career like you did. Oh, I didn't give up anything. Well, if you hadn't married a mug like me, there's no telling where you'd ended up. I'd ended up just the way I started, in love with you. Gee, that's swell. I always kind of wondered if you might not be sorry that you... Sorry? No. No, I'm glad. Have, have you ever been sorry, Johnny? Me? I should say no. Well, I don't know what I'd have done the last ten years without you. Well, you'd have got along all right. No, I wouldn't. Well, how do you suppose I'd ever work my way up to be head shipping clerk if you hadn't encouraged me? Oh, gee, I never knew you felt that way before. I, I thought sometimes you might have felt the baby me was sort of holding you back from getting someplace. I don't see whatever made you think a thing like that. Not if you'd asked me, I'd have told you. You don't want to go around thinking things like that. Oh, it doesn't matter, Johnny. Nothing matters as long as you love me. Sure, I do. Here, let me show you how much. You better not do that, Johnny. The old guy's looking at us. Maybe they don't allow you to do things like that here. <laughs> well, say, I don't see why not. A fella can't kiss his own wife. Well, but he may not know we're married, and there's no way he could tell just by looking at us. You know, he might think we was being sort of mushy. Come on, now. You better speak to him. Ask him if we can go through the gate. I'll ask him. You, uh, uh you better come along with me, then, in case it's all right. We, we go right in, see? Sure, I'll go with you. <laughs> Gee, with those whiskers, he looks so 
Something like the old man we used to see riding on the Second Avenue L, don't he? <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, excuse me, mister. Uh, uh, welcome, my children. Uh, thanks, thanks. You have just arrived. Uh, we uh, just got here. We, we've been looking around some. That's a nice place you got inside the gate there. Uh, you, uh, you the watchman? I'm the keeper of the gate. Gee, sure is a nice place. What do you call it? The Elysian Fields. Gee, gee, that's a swell name. The Elysian Fields. Is that a swell name, Mary? Yeah. yeah it just sort of fits it, don't it? It sure does. Yes, sir. Just sort of tailor-made. I bet you a lot of apartment house owners would like to know about that name. It's good class, you know, like Ravenfield Court or Tawanda Terrace. Gee, I bet you they wouldn't have no trouble at all getting people to move into a place called the Elysian Gardens. No, sir. I bet you they wouldn't have a single vacancy. Johnny, Johnny, ask him if, if we can go on in. Oh, yeah. Uh, mister, my wife was just asking me if it would be all right if we went in there and looked around a little. You see, she kind of takes the flowers. What is your name, please? Smith. J. Smith. This is my wife, Mary. Uh, uh, Jay Smith and wife, I guess they'd have us down under. I'll see if your names are in my book. That'd be nice of you. I don't know how we got here, what we're doing here. You see, we, we took the boy, uh, Tommy, his name is. Yeah, he's eight years old. Yeah, we took him on sort of an outing this morning. Do we think it was this morning? Sure, and something happened. Yes, yeah, some, some sort of accident. Yeah, that was it, an, an accident. Something, uh, something happened to the boat. And you both died this afternoon. Died? Yes, my son. Dead? You mean Johnny and me? It is only the dead who pass this way, my dear. I'll go look in the book. Johnny? Johnny, is he right? Well, maybe something happened to us in the accident. It's all kind of like a dream, but maybe he's right. Oh, no. No, we can't be, Johnny. We just can't be. Don't you see? If we're dead like he says, there's no one to take care of Tommy. He'll be all right. No. His grandma, she's crazy about him. She'll look after him. But it's me he wants. He's got to do his lessons, and, and he mustn't fight with the boy in the tailor's shop. Oh, gee, Mary, we're here, and I, I guess there ain't nothing we can do about it. But he's just a baby. We just got to take what comes along like we always have. Johnny. Hey, we can get things fixed up when we go inside. Let's, let's just wait here now until he gets back. said the name was J. Smith and wife. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, mister. I do not find such a name in my book. You, you don't? No. Well, it, it must. I... It is not here. I'm sorry. Oh. Well, it doesn't matter, I guess. Oh, but Johnny... I'm sorry. Very sorry. I really am. Oh, well, that's all right. It's not your fault. There's no cause for you to feel bad about it. What, couldn't there be some mistake, maybe? You know, there's so many Smiths. There was a couple right in our block. There's no mistake, Mary Smith. Well, do you think they might not have got around to putting our names down yet? Maybe if we used to wait around a little? No, John Smith. It would be useless to wait. You see, the names here recorded are of those who have done some great unselfish deed during their lifetime. Some noble act in which they forgot themselves and... Gave all they had. They, and they only may pass through these gates. Well, that's pretty fine, but we never done nothing like that, did we, Mary? No, we're, we're just kind of ordinary. Well, what becomes of ordinary people like us? Isn't there some place that... Of course there is a place for you, just beyond here. Uh, you'll be very happy there, because it has beauty too, but a different kind of beauty. As far as your eyes can see our golden streets. Oh, well, that's that's pretty fine, isn't it? Sure. That'll be great, won't it, Mary? Yeah, just great, Johnny. Well, I bet you I bet you never expected to see nothing like that, did you? No, no, I should say not. Golden streets. Perhaps I'm wrong, but you don't seem very happy about it. Oh, oh, well, yeah, we're happy all right. At least I am. Mary's a little little disappointed, maybe. Disappointed. Yeah, you see she's always had streets. Nothing but streets with buildings all around. Well, you can see how it is, mister. When you've been walking on streets all your life, it's kind of hard to get all excited about more streets, even even if they are made out of gold. I understand, and I'm sorry. But I can't alter the rules. No, no, sure you can't. Gosh, we wouldn't ask you to do that, Gino. We, 
We wouldn't want you to get in any trouble over us. Oh, no, of course not. Why, every place has got to have rules to keep things running right. Sure, even the place I worked at got out a little book of rules with the boss's picture in front. I worked for him going on 12 years, and I never broke a rule. Oh, yes, you did, Johnny. You broke a rule the time the baby came. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, you see, there was a rule that no employee was supposed to leave the building before 5.30 without getting permission from the head of the department. Yeah, well, they called me from the hospital about 5.20 and told me everything was all right and there was a boy and, oh, gee, I was so excited. <laughs> yeah, he just got his hat and left without saying a word to Mr. Cochran. Mr. Cochran was his foreman. The big boss was nice about it, though. Oh, yes, he was, Johnny. Yes, sir. Mr. Corcoran sent him up a full report of what I did and why. And you know what he did? He sent down word that I was only to be docked half a day's pay for walking out that way ten minutes ahead of time. Gee, he's a swell guy. I wish you could meet him, mister. Yes, yes. I'm looking forward to meeting your boss, if he ever comes this way. I'll bet you he'll get in those Elysian fields without no trouble at all. I'll bet you they'll reserve a whole page for his name in that book of yours. Yes, sir, he's a big shot. I, I guess you, you had kind of a quiet laugh all to yourself when you thought about two people like us trying to get into a grand place that's sort of reserved. Reserved for big guys like him. No, I didn't laugh, Mrs. Smith. I guess we better be moving along and not take up no more of your time. Gee, I, I guess I've been talking your arm off and keep him from doing something important. I was just about to leave when you came along. Oh, you're closing up for the day? There'll be no more wanderers on this road until tomorrow. I hope. Well, good night, my friends. Good night. Good night, mister. The place you seek is just beyond. Thanks, thank you. We'll we'll rest a while and then get started. It's quiet, isn't it, Johnny? So quiet, it kind of hurts your ears. Well, I guess we'd better get along to the place he told us to go. Yeah, I guess we'd better. Only... Only what, Pat? Well, I don't suppose we'll ever be back at this place again. No, I guess we won't. Why? You think we could just look through the gate before we go? Not open it, you know, just look through. It'd be something to remember... Something to kind of think about. Well... Kind of like those flowers we brought back to the apartment. Something that would kind of remind us that there are swell things. Beautiful things. Even if we can't ever have them. I know what you mean. No, I don't think anybody care. They, they couldn't do no harm just looking through the bars. I don't see how they'd have any rule against that. Sure. Go ahead, look. Ain't you coming with me? Yeah, I'll come along if you want me to. Gee, it's so pretty, it sort of takes your breath away. Yeah, it's all right. It makes you feel it. Well, it... Oh, come on, Johnny. Let's go on to where we belong. You don't want to look at it no more? No, I'm all through looking. But... Oh, gee, Mary, don't do that. Oh, I'm all right. I'm all right to tell you. Please don't cry. Now, there ain't nothing that's worth your crying. But nothing I'm anywhere. Crying, Johnny, honest, I ain't. Besides, if I was, it wouldn't mean anything. Don't I always cry when I'm happy? All women do that. Gee, a woman crying don't mean nothing. Nothing at all. I'm just kind of tired. That's all. Tired. I'm tired, too. Awful tired. Tired of being just ordinary, common. Tired of being made to feel we don't amount to nothing, that we're just washouts. Oh, Johnny! Johnny, you mustn't feel like that. Well, it's the truth, ain't it? No! Oh, I go on kidding myself. All my life I've pretended I didn't care, and I made up stories about how this one and that one thought I was the works, but they didn't. They didn't even know I was alive. Oh, Johnny, you mustn't say things like that. They ain't true. Sure, it's true. They didn't even know I was alive, and, and now they don't even know I'm dead. <laughs> I'm still nobody, and you're a nobody, too, just because you married me. Oh. That ain't right. There ain't no reason for them to put you in my class just because you're my wife. Johnny. There ain't no sense in them making you cry. I tell you, it ain't right. But I'm not crying, Johnny. I told you. We didn't Gee. ask to come here, did we? He said we died this afternoon. Well, I thought when you died, it'd be different, but no, it's just like it's always been. But, Johnny, don't you see? The man said this place was sort of special for people that had done something swell, something big and unselfish. Well, we never had a chance to do nothing like that. No, I know we didn't, Johnny. Oh, but 
It doesn't matter. We don't ha have to go in there. We can be happy any place as long as we're together. Sure we can. But don't you remember how happy we were getting ready for the trip? Do you don't you remember how excited we were? Yeah, I remember. And yesterday morning, Tommy was up before daylight. He was so afraid we'd miss the boat. Johnny, you know something. He's going to look just like you when he grows up. I couldn't help noticing when he went down the steps. He's got the same way of walking and the same way of holding his head. You think so? And he talks just like you, too. He's got that, that same habit of kind of smiling all the time. Oh, but he's got your eyes. Hmm? Hey, he sure was excited about going on the boat, wasn't he? Oh, he didn't talk about nothing else for days. Remember how his eyes stuck out when I came home and told him how I'd got honorable mention in the Limerick contest yeah. and they was giving us the boat trip clear up to oh, Boston? Do you think I could ever forget <laughs> it? You know what he did? He showed your name in the magazine to all the kids in the neighborhood. Did he do that? Yeah. Gee, I guess if he saves it, he can prove to everybody that his old man wasn't a dumbbell, can he? Well, I guess it ain't everybody that gets his name in a magazine. That one that goes all over the country like that one. It was in great big type, too. J. Smith, honorable mention. That's nearly as good as being on one of them rolls of honor, ain't it? J. Smith, honorable mention. That'll be something for him to show people, all right. And I bet you he'll tell them how brave you were when the boat went down, too. When the boat... Gee, ain't that funny. I... I'd almost forgot all about that. Seems so long ago. Well, it... it was just last night, don't you remember? We was all asleep in the cabin. Yeah, and the smoke woke me up. And you opened the door, and there was fire everywhere. That's right. Somebody was yelling that the boat was sinking and to get in the lifeboats. Yeah, but we couldn't find any. Everybody had gone off and left us. I remember Tommy crying. He was he was so scared. Then the fire came all around us. You couldn't breathe. And we jumped. You had Tommy in your arms. In the water, it was terrible cold. Oh, like ice. It made you numb all over. But we started to swim for the lights on the shore. Oh, there was a terrible long way off. Too far, I guess. I used to be a good swimmer, but I got kind of tired. Well, you was holding us both up, Johnny and me. Oh, gee, I don't see how you ever got as far as that life preserver. Gosh, I was glad to see that floating on the water. If it had only been a boat or something, we could have all held on to it till somebody came along and picked us up. But even I could see the one life preserver couldn't hold all three of us up. They're only made for one. Gee, didn't we have a time getting Tommy into it? And fixing it so it wouldn't come off. He didn't want us to leave him, did he? No, no, but he, he promised he wouldn't cry when I asked him not to and told him we were both going for help, and he kissed me goodbye, Johnny. He kissed me right here on the forehead because the life preserver kept me from getting close to him, see? Gee, I didn't mind dying, did you? No. I wasn't afraid because I knew he'd be all right. Sure. That's it. Nobody minds dying. Not for somebody they love. Sure they don't. Besides, we aren't dead, Johnny. Because Tommy's still living. And he's us. You and me together. Sure, only he's better than us. He'll grow up to be as big as the love you and me have for each other. Because he was born from that love. We were just ordinary. But he'll be the kind that'll do some wonderful thing like that gate man said. Something you and me never had a chance to do. Something unselfish and fine. Why, why, maybe that's why you and me died, so so he can do that, Johnny. Sure, maybe we did. Oh, my children, come on to me. Listen, did you hear somebody speak, Johnny? No, no, I didn't hear anything. Those who dwell here with me have given much for your sake, but you have given more than any of these. Oh, you have given all. Don't you hear it, Johnny? It's a voice I've heard somewhere before. Do you not know that I smile on the foolish things of the world? That I might put shame to those that are wise? Do you not know that I choose the weak things of the world that I might put to shame the things that are strong? Yeah, yeah, I hear it, Mary. Only it isn't a voice, it's more like music. I will go before you and make the rough places smooth. I will break in pieces the doors of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Johnny. Johnny, look. The gate's standing open. Yeah. Wide open, Johnny. Yeah. I didn't touch it. Honest, I didn't. I hope nobody will. The gates opened. never will be closed against such as you. Come on to me, and I shall wipe away every tear from your eyes, and death shall be no more. 
Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain. Can you not hear me? Come. Johnny, the voice, it's speaking to us. It's asking us to come on, to come in the gate. But we don't belong there. That's not our place. Well, maybe not. Maybe we ain't never been anything. Maybe we ain't never done anything. But maybe somebody wants us just the same. Maybe... Maybe they do, Johnny. Let's go in and see. This is Dana Andrews again. I know I speak for all of you when I say thank you, Bing Crosby and Irene Dunn, for telling us the story of Jay Smith and wife. You know something? Everybody wants to be rich. I want to be rich. You want to be rich. But did you ever stop to think what makes you rich? A million bucks? There are lots of guys making 40 bucks a week with a swell wife and a couple of swell kids. Those guys wouldn't take a million bucks for even one kid. So who's rich? The guy with a million dollars or the guy with 40 bucks? the wife and the swell kids. What I'm driving at is this. You just can't put a price on what it means to have a family you love, and a family that loves you, the right kind of family. Maybe you're a little scared that your family won't grow up to be the right kind of family. But don't worry. You can get insurance against that, the best kind of insurance in the world. Prayer. Family prayer. A family that prays together stays together. A family that prays together is not the kind of family that gets into trouble. You know that. Ask, and you shall receive. You know that, too. So ask. Ask God to help you. He will. That you can be sure of. Before saying goodnight, I want to express our thanks to all of you who have helped make this program possible. Thanks also to Richard Sandal for directing our play tonight and to our producer, Bob Longenecker. Next week, the Family Theater will star Miss Margaret Sullivan in an original story by Walter Newman entitled, I Give You Maggie. Now, this is Dana Andrews saying good night, all. Next week, and in the weeks that follow, you will hear more of your favorite stars, such as Spencer Tracy, Maureen O'Hara, Susan Peters, Rosalind Russell, Ruth Huzzy, Charles Boyer, and Pat O'Brien, in plays written especially for family theater by the nation's leading radio dramatists and directed by the most outstanding directors. This series of the family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need and by the actors and technicians in the motion picture and radio industries who have volunteered their services to fulfill it. This program is heard overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.